Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the information evening for Gory Educate Together Secondary School. My name is Connor Berry, and I'm principal of the school here. And uh, this evening, I'll give you an insight into our school and answer all questions that you may have about what we can offer your child. Now, I realise it's a huge decision for your family um, about where your children are going to go to secondary school. And after tonight, I hope you leave in the best position possible to make an informed choice for, of school for your child. So the plan for tonight, <clears throat> after a little bit more of an introduction, we're going to show you our new school promotional video, which we shot in the last two weeks involving a lot of our students. Um, then we'll be joined by Joanne O'Grady, who is the chairperson of our board of management. Uh, I'll go through a school presentation, which will go through all the subjects and curriculum and what we offer here in school. Then our deputy John Murphy will talk to us about um, parental involvement in the school, which is a huge aspect of our school. Uh, we're going to hear from our current parents, and I want to thank all our parents who gave up their free time to come in to be videoed for this. Um, then we'll be joined by our current year head Julie and our class tutors Casey and Helen, who will speak to you about what goes on in the school on a day to day basis and a lot of our procedures here. And we'll then hear from the most important people in our school who are our students. And again, thanks to all the students who volunteer to be part of the student videos. And then there'll be time at the end to answer any questions that you may have or you feel haven't been answered throughout the, the duration of this. Um, you can also use the Q&A function on the app to put up your uh, questions live. So um, first, I suppose the big question that everybody has is <clears throat> what are the plans for our new school? So at the moment, we're currently on the Department of Education advanced building list and we're at the site acquisition phase. And um, so the site is very close to being agreed upon between the Department of Education and a local landowner. And once that's completed, that transaction is completed, we'll move to the pre-planning phase for a new school. Um, in the meanwhile, uh, our newer interim accommodation is currently being prepared and will be in place by the end of December on the Fort Road here, right beside where we are at the moment. So the work is ongoing and when it's completed, we'll have a fully equipped home economics room, a play technology room, a science lab, and then all our administrative offices and all our academic classrooms. So now I know a lot of you will focus on the new school building and maybe just a reminder that Crea College just up the road from us only opened in 2011 and they were in interim accommodation for three years uh, and they went into their new school building in 2014. So in the last seven years, they've, they've reached the capacity of a thousand students, um, which is what we're looking at in the next couple of years. So I suppose a little bit of patience is needed as well because it will all happen. What's more important to us here in Gory Educate Together Secondary School is not just the buildings, but what goes on in the buildings. So I'm talking about the quality of teaching and learning that takes place in our school. And in terms of the school atmosphere that's created and experienced by the students and staff. And really important is the relationship that exists between the students and the teachers. So what I'd say to you is if you're dreaming of your child achieving 600 points in Leaving Cert and you want your child to experience that high quality education that's student centred and it makes the most effective use of digital technologies, then you've come to the right place tonight. If you want your child to feel safe and to feel happy, you've definitely come to the right place tonight. And most importantly, if you want your child to be valued for the unique individual that they are, you've certainly come to the right place tonight. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to have a look at our school promotional video that shows what goes on here on a day to day basis uh, with our students.
Hi, my name's Joanna Grady and I've recently been appointed as chairperson for the board of management for the new Gory Educate Together Secondary School. It's really amazing that only a year ago a new secondary school was sanctioned for Gory <clears throat> and here we are at the second information evening discussing the second intake of first year students to the school. So much has been achieved in a very short space of time. The efforts and commitment of many have realised this achievement. These include the third school and patronage campaigners, the Educate Together patron, Principal Connor, Deputy Principal John and all the staff now working at the school. We are really lucky that Gory now has three excellent schools and the Educate Together Secondary School has expanded on and diversified the provision, bringing real choice to parents and students. Educate Together brings an equality based model, which is child and learner centred, inclusive and democratically run. It recognises the rights of every individual in the learning environment as an equal citizen. I'm also attending the webinar tonight as the parent of a sixth class student, and I am so encouraged by what I have seen in the schools so far. The core national curriculum subjects are, of course, all taught and the additional subject choice is broad, offering a number of European languages, subject options from technology to art, ethical education and well-being, as well as a range of after school activities from sports to book clubs, science and music. There really is something for everyone and the wide range of interests and abilities shown by the students is developed and supported. I know the school will continue to build on the strength with which it has started and it will be very exciting to have the second intake of students coming on board and watching the school grow. The Board of Management wishes all the current sixth class students the very best as they continue on their journey to secondary school. Thank you and I will now pass you back to Connor for the presentation. Okay, so we're going to have a look at our school and what exactly we can offer to your child. So first of all, who we are. We're a voluntary uh, secondary school under sole patronage of Educate Together. And what we do here is we provide a high quality 21st century learning experience for our students. We develop and nurture critical thinking, effective communication and active responsible citizenship. And we provide, as Joanne said, a broad curriculum along with a wide range of extracurricular, cultural and social activities which all take place in an inclusive environment. I'm going to dive a little bit more into those things as we go through this presentation. So in terms of being an Educate Together secondary school, some people might be as familiar with it. So we're state funded, which means um, we're overseen by the Department of Education. So we follow all the rules and regulations and circulars that are sent out by the Department of Education. We don't wear any uniforms in school here and all the teachers and students are on a first name basis, which creates a lovely atmosphere here in school and it breaks down a lot of barriers between the students and teachers. We're non fee paying, we're open to all children from all religious, from all backgrounds, from everywhere. Uh, we teach ethical education. Uh, ethical, ethical education examines equality, justice, sustainability and active citizenship. And we also teach the national curriculum. So junior cycle, senior cycle and in time transition year LCA and LCVP. So we're multi-denominational, we're co-educational, we're very child centred and student voice is incredibly important to us. And then we're democratically run and we'll speak to John a little bit later on about the involvement of the parents and you're going to see very clearly about the involvement of the students in our school. So our curriculum, this is probably the part that a lot of people are very, very interested in, in terms of what do we actually offer in terms of subjects. So our core subjects, we have maths, Irish and English, as every school would. If your child happens to be exempted from Irish in, in primary school and they have the correct reports with them, they will be exempted from Irish in secondary school level. Um, next year we will offer both Spanish and French as optional languages, so your child will have to choose one of them before they come in. So they'll study either French or Spanish, whichever they choose, we will be offering both subjects. As I said, we teach ethical education here, science, history and geography. So these are all the subjects that your child will study when they come into our school. In terms of our subject options, we run taster courses in the following options, which means that when your child comes in in September, they'll be given this year to do nine weeks They're in three weeks of three uh, uh, of uh, subjects where they rotate around every three weeks. So they're getting to, they're getting to have a taste of each of the individual subjects before they choose them after Halloween. 
So business studies, music, art, home economics, applied technology and graphics. So what our current students will do now after Halloween is they will choose two of these subjects to take forward to junior cycle level. And all these, all these subjects will be offered to junior cycle level. Outside, uh, following with our curriculum, then we have a number of short courses. So short courses are subjects that are given certification at junior cycle level. Uh, we do climate action. We're one of the only schools in Ireland that offers uh, climate action as a short course here. We're one of the pilot schools for it. And uh, climate action and environmental sustainability is really, really important to us here in school. And we also do artistic performance. So this is where students learn about the arts through the arts. And then we have our area of well-being, which will be similar to all secondary schools, which involve the subjects of CSPE, SPHE and PE. So that will bring us up then to our extracurricular activities. So what else do we offer the students? So outside of the classroom, after school, we run a huge amount of different uh, clubs. We have a science club, with music and performance, with GAA, football, ladies football, camogie, with soccer, we have a book club. You can see some photos of it there in the presentation. The children have just finished reading the first Harry Potter book. We do circuit training for those interested in fitness. We do cake decorating class. You can see some of the uh, cakes that have been decorated in the picture as well. And we also do an arts and crafts club. They're currently doing crocheting. Now, the important part of our extracurricular activities is that the students are asked about what activities they would like to do. And then depending on enough numbers, there will be a teacher who would put that uh, club on. So that's really important. We listen to our students in terms of what they want uh, for their extracurricular activities. So this was all decided on when we came back in September uh, from speaking to the students. So again, it's really important that we listen to our students in school and they have a big say in what happens. In terms of what our school day looks like, this will be our timetable broken down. We teach six classes a day, so they're 58 minute classes. We have a break for about 20 minutes uh, each morning and then 35 minutes at uh, our bigger lunch. And um, we finish at half three. We start a quarter to nine every day from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. And we finish at half three, Monday through to Thursday. And on Fridays, we finish at two o'clock. So we have five classes on Friday and there's no big break. We just finish at two o'clock on Friday. So that's what your school day would look like and your school week would look like here with us in school. We also do something that no other school does here in Gorey or in Wexford, which is project based learning. This is where a number of subject areas come together based on learning objectives and they, the students will complete a, a project based on a particular area that is of interest to the students. So it's a teaching method in which students gain knowledge and skills by working to investigate and respond to an engaging and complex question, problem or challenge. So they look at something that's really, really current and they look to see what's going on about it in the world and what they can do to uh, affect it. So this year, our project based learning is going to be based around the UN Sustainable Goal 6 about clean water and sanitation. So they're going to be looking at how we can improve water quality, increase and reuse, uh, reuse water and eliminate dumping. So it'll be very interesting to see what it's a very student led project and it'll be very interesting to see what conclusions they come up with. And most importantly here in school, what action they take around it, which is really, really important in terms of building active citizens, responsible citizens here. So if all this sounds good to you, how can you apply? So here's a snapshot of our website on www.goryetss.ie. This is our homepage. And if you go to where uh, the admission section is in the drop down, you'll see application form. And if you click on application form, it will bring you into this page. And in the blue, you can see it's a jot form where you click into it. And there's only a, a very short number of questions there. You just fill in the basic information for your student and that will be popped into us then by email and then we'll have your application form. All right. So the timeline for that is we opened our applications on the 11th of October and the applications will close on the 8th of November. And this has been uh, aligned with the other two schools in Gorey. So all three schools in Gorey are doing this at the exact same time. And the applications are absolutely flying into the school here at the moment. So again, you can find us on lots of social media. If you want to see more photographs, and videos of what we do in school here, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. You can always go onto our website where we're linked into Facebook there as well. You can see all the fantastic work that's going on in school here. Put those up again at the end tonight. OK, so from here we're going to go and uh, speak to our Deputy Principal John, who's going to speak to us a little bit about parental involvement in the school and the huge role that parents play in our school.
on, on mute the mic would be helpful. Uh, good evening, my name is John Murphy. I'm the deputy principal of Gory Educate Together Secondary School. Active parental involvement is a key element of the Educate Together ethos. And here in Gory EPSS, we aim to engage with parents on many levels, involving them in the children's learning and decision making in the school. And it mainly happens in, in a couple of ways. The first one is our board of management, where two of our parents are elected to sit on the school board of management. So this gives our parents a chance to input into the running of the school through their representatives on the board of management. The parents association is the second way and this will be established this school year. And as it develops, it will be an important vehicle for ensuring that parents are meaningfully involved in decision making in the school. The parents association and board of management are just two elements of our overall approach to parental engagement, along with other formal and informal structures and practices where we invite parents to get involved in different aspects of school life. But now I think we will listen to what some of our parents have had to say about the school. Hi, I'm Gina. My daughter Tanya started here in September and I'm absolutely delighted she got into her school of choice. Um, reasons being small classes, um, you know, she's going to get more attention in a small class and she is quite academic and could do with the, the small group and um, they get way more attention. The teachers are very involved and very hands on and that is a major point for myself. They have great after school activities and Danielle is involved in each of those. They do home egg, they do book club, they do science, everything you can imagine, every um, range of academic that you can imagine they cover. Hi, my son Ewan is attending Gory ETSS. I would highly re recommend anybody who wants to attend. Um, so, so far we've been really happy, myself and my daughter. Um, you know, at first I wondered would it you know would it be better to go into a bigger school or here because there's, there's fewer kids here and I'm really happy to say that she's made really good friends with everyone in our class and I think the team building exercises that um, they've been doing have really been a good help for the kids to get to know each other. I think one of the main things I'm really happy about is the homework. The homework then gets uploaded onto teams I think there's an encouragement there for them to get the homework done. You know, moving on in the future, those organisation skills she'll she'll bring she'll bring into whatever she does in life. She she already liked debating from from her um, primary school, so she was really delighted that the debating society is going to our team is going to be started, and she's now joined the Amber um, the Amber flag, which is a mental health program. So she's going to be involved um, in that over, over the course of the year. So she's really happy, really happy with that as well. Uh, hi, um, I'm Leah's mum, Louise. Uh, she's first year in Goring Education at the secondary school. She's loving being in the school. There's a lot of stuff for her to do after school. Um, Leah's joined book club. She has joined soccer. She's doing cake decorating after school. Options in school as well, but she's trying out new subjects. It's really, really good. She's getting such a broad um, chance of, of learning so many different things. Um, really, really happy with her here, as is Leah, who doesn't like to miss a day of school now either, so which is all good. Hi, right, my name is uh, Tony Delaney, and um, it was around this time last year that the topic of conversation regarding um, secondary schools and the uh, selection process of it came into question. My daughter Erin, who, who attends this school now, um, we asked her which school she would uh, like to go to. And one school's name uh, kept cropping up in conversation, which was the new Gory Educate Together School. I do recall her saying often, I just get a good feeling about it. This is where secondary school 21st century education should be at. Coupled with a, with a sort of obvious fact that any new school is going to have new teachers, highly motivated, enthusiastic, that would ultimately feed into the students in the school. So from that, we sort of asked the question, why would you choose Gory Educate to get a secondary school? 
it sort of became more, why wouldn't you choose Glory Educated Care School? Um, I can personally say, and I speak on behalf of my wife and me, um, that I would strongly recommend Glory Educated Care School. I Hi, I'm Julie and I'm this year's year head and I'm here with Casey and Helen, the class tutors. So our team looks after the well-being of your child and we ensure a, tr a smooth transition into post-primary. So for the first week they come here, there's big changes in their lives. It's a natural progress for them to come to um, post-primary, but they still need a lot of support and guidance. So having the team here, we it just gives them some sort of consistency because they've gone from primary school where they've uh, one teacher all day to many different teachers. So it gives them that little bit of um, support. Um, we have an induction programme which lasts for that week and it's activity based. And the main focus of that is, to, is bonding and to get them relaxed and comfortable in their new surroundings. And once we get that right, the rest naturally flows because if they're not happy, they're not going to do well academically. Even the most studious child will not study if they're not happy. So that is our focus in the first week. Um, as I said, lots of activities, team bonding. And this year, for example, we took a little trip out to the stables uh, where they did activities. Um, the induction process then still goes on for the first while, of course. For example, for the end of this week, they're writing a little letter to themselves. They did um, the first impressions they wrote down on day one, and we kept that for them. The end of this term now, they're going to write down a little letter to themselves that they'll open in sixth year. As well as for the rest of the year, then we just look after their well-being and ensure the smooth running of the year. So as well as the high academic standards that we set, we also place an emphasis on things like resilience, kindness, empathy, and we've a lot of different um, programmes that the girls have talked to you about um, to ensure this. And we're work we place emphasis on positive mental health. We're working towards the amber flag and they've lots of different opportunities that um, Casey will talk to you about now. Um, so I'm, my name is Casey, I'm one of the class tutors here in school and um, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about the positive reward system that we have here in our school. So we call it a positive affirmation card. So it's through our online system and um, the teachers can log all of the positive behaviour that they see from the students that we're getting to really, really reward them for all the positive things they're doing. For example, like Julia said already, um, for things like kindness, for contribution to the school ethos. So just to note as well that they're not solely academic that they are rewarded for the interactions with others, with their teachers, with fellow students and with the local community as well. Um, so as part of that, we also have student voice. And it's really, really important that the students are involved in how the pack is run. So for example, we have sent some postcards home recently for students who received five positive behaviours um, through our online system. Um, they'll also have some other awards which we're working with, with the students at the moment. So we've got a pack committee, so a positive affirmation card committee, um, just to make sure that all that's filtered through and they have their own input. Um, I think Helen is now going to talk to us a little bit more about um, some of the other ways that we have student voice in the school. Yeah, so like Connor mentioned earlier, and like Casey says, student voice is really, really important to us here in Educate Together. So uh, it was important to set up the student council as early as possible. Uh, the student council, they were able to put themselves forward for the position. There was two people from each class, and then they were voted upon by their classmates. So that was their input and uh, we also have class captain they actually applied for class captain and myself and Casey chose the class captain based on their application and it, it was great that we got so many applications for that and um, we will also have we're looking at um, implementing digital leaders so they're uh, students that are maybe more technologically inclined and uh, were very able to get on with it and maybe be able to help their fellow students with that. And like Casey said, we'll have a PAC committee as well. So all of that is student voice and it's providing more leadership opportunities within each classroom for everyone. So the, as you said, the, the students have a big input. We also want, as John said, the parents have a big input. So with that in mind, we understand that with the digital technologies, it's, it can be difficult for parents. So we have invited parents to, we give them training on how they can best support their child. And that basically we're all working together for the good of the child. And um, with, as Helen mentioned, digital leaders, we have a few um, 
started, we talked to the student this week about would they recommend the school and they're all really happy here and they said they would like to actually put a video together. So a few of them put the video to get the following video together um, to tell you how they feel in school. So the video will play now. Because the teachers are super nice to us and they treat us really well so that's why I went here. My favourite thing about school is definitely science. My favourite thing about school is geography and I love going to cake decorating. Uh, I like coming to school here because uh, uh, the teachers are real nice and they uh, listen to us. My favourite thing about school is in science when I get to do the experiments. <laughs> My favourite thing about school is the after school club, so it just does that a lot when you can do that stuff now. Uh, I really like in the school that you're able to wear what you want and be your own person and instead of just following what everyone else is doing. My favourite thing, like my favourite subject is home ec. I love coming into school every day. I like the fact that I get to be an individual. of this school because of how easy everyone gets on. Okay, thanks so for joining us. You're about 100 of the child the school and um, you've been here for six or seven weeks and uh, I suppose you're students that are elected onto our very first student council, which is the position to be in. Not so far. Like but everyone's just going to have to. Yeah. Well, after, no, three. Three, I'd say. And the answer. One is about the most. I answer in there, but I'm going to. Okay. 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 Okay
Uh, what's the kind of relationships like between the teachers and the students here in school? I think it's pretty, it's pretty good because it's not just kind of like teachers like are more powerful than you. It's kind of like that. It's all just like an equal kind of thing. They want to hear what you're like going to talk about. And Brilliant. What about you girls? It's a nice place. Okay, so you've just heard from um, both our parents and our students, our fantastic students that, as Julie said, wanted to put something together to show you all uh, on the information night, just how happy they are, how supported they feel, and what kind of relationships are here between the students and the teachers, and the atmosphere that we've created in school here uh, since early September. Um, so look, at, I want to thank everybody uh, for coming along tonight, and hopefully we've given you a really good insight into what we offer in school uh, and what we're all about here. There have been a couple of questions coming on, on the, the question and answer section here. Um, there's been a question around buses. So currently uh, I've been in touch with Bus Air uh, and due to come back to me, but I don't envisage that buses will be an issue next year um, and with all this year to, to get it sorted out. Usually it falls back on the parents to have 10 students in a particular area uh, and then Bus Air will put on a bus on the bus route. Uh, but there are so many buses coming into Gory now for the, the various different schools. Um, so I'm just waiting to have that conversation with Bus Air, uh, but it's something that's very high on our priorities to sort out for next year. So that will be all in train this year and be sorted out for next September. Um, somebody else has asked about, sorry, somebody was having connectivity issues and they couldn't see it. So this has been recorded and a recording of the whole information that will be available on the website um, after tonight. So it should be up there tomorrow some at some stage. And then also um, the video that you've seen, our school promotional video, that's also available on our website. So if you go to www.goryetss.ie and if you go to the About Us section on the website and you click in there, you'll see the school promotional video and you can have a look at it again, maybe um, with your own children if they want to have a look back on it again. Um, there's another couple of questions came in here. Uh, children might be studying another subject outside of like classics or classical studies. Absolutely, we, we can um, facilitate the students sit an exam at their junior cert if they're studying outside of school. Absolutely, there's a timetable there for junior cert exams and we can facilitate the students sit uh, a separate subject if they're doing it outside of school in their own time. Absolutely, there's no issue with that. Uh, class sizes. So the Department of Education regulations are the class sizes Will be a maximum of 24. Um, so our class sizes this year, we have currently 34 students in the school, so we have two classes of 17. Um, and I suppose we use a lot of team teaching in terms of our resource hours. So the teacher, the second teacher goes into the classroom. So there's a lot, uh, the pupil teacher ratio is very good. Next year, um, as I said, we've got a lot of applications in. We're probably going to reach our quota very easily in terms of our places next year. Uh, so we will be looking at base classes of about 24 students. And then when they've split for options, then it might be a little bit less than that. Um, so that's kind of what we're looking at for next year. Uh, we've been asked how many places are available for 2022. Um, the Department of Education has sanctioned us for 72 places. Um, I can tell you that our enrolments at the moment have, have gone to 130. So um, it'll be a conversation we'll have with the Department of Education if at the point we have that many acceptances that they, we may be able to take another class or two. But again, that's a conversation to, to have with the Department of Education a little bit later on. But I would say, you know, we're certainly going to fit our 72 class places. Um, and if that's the case, we'll go by our admissions policy and the admissions policy is on the website there for anyone who wants to have a look at it in terms of how the school places are um, filled. Um, how are classes split in terms of higher and ordinary level as questions come in here? Most subjects at junior cert level now are common level. And um, so really there's no splits until you get to leave in cert level. And even at that, um, most subjects will teach both uh, higher and ordinary in the same class unless it gets to things like maths, uh, sometimes in English. But it's not something we really uh, look at until leaving certain level. That would be in most schools. If any school is doing it before that, really, they're not following best practice. So um, most subjects all a common level until junior cycle at the moment. Um, will we be introducing more optional subjects like classical studies? Yeah, look, as our school grows, we will certainly like we have as broad a subject range as you would get in most schools. We're aware there's a couple of subjects maybe um, that people would like to have. And as our school grows and our student numbers increase and our teaching numbers increase, we we'll certainly be offering um, way more optional subjects and every year we'll look at our curriculum and we will review it with the students. We will review it with the parents, we'll review it with the board of management. Um, so we're all in this together here in our school and we will all look at everything that we provide. But absolutely, we will have more um, optional subjects moving forward in school. 
Uh, do we use school books in the school? Yes, we do. Uh, every student uses a laptop that's purchased from our technology partner, Riggle. Um, but we do believe very, very strongly in using textbooks, copies, and there is a lot of writing in school here. So we're not a device led school. We use uh, devices and technology to enhance the learning that goes on in the school here. Um, and all the students and parents would attest to that. Uh, so we make the very best use of digital technologies to prepare students for everything going to meet in the future. Uh, but we believe very strongly in handwriting in textbooks. So generally how it works is the textbooks stay at home because the textbooks are uploaded onto the student's laptop anyway. So if they need to access their textbook, it's on their laptop and have the textbook at home then for reference if they need it for homework or whatever. But the students bring their laptops home uh, every evening as well. But there's a strong emphasis on handwriting because every exam that we're going to do is going to be a written exam. So we're very, very aware of that. So we, we make the very, very best of both worlds. Everything we do here is effective, is efficient, uh, and it's based on best practice. Uh, we have another couple here, school books. Um, yeah, so how many students have been offered places? I've just gone through that. When, when will parents be notified if their child's place has been accepted? Uh, so the closing date for the applications is the 8th of November, uh, and then between the 9th of November and the 19th of November. Uh, is the kind of two week period where parents will be notified of whether their child has been given a, a place in the school and then parents will have uh, two weeks after that then to confirm their acceptance of a place in the school here. So after the 8th of November, we'll start about uh, looking at sending out the letters of offer for places in the school. So they'll come out up to the 19th of November. So by the 19th of November, and this has been agreed with the three schools in Gorey, every parent and child in Gorey will know by the 19th of November what offers they have from what schools in Gorey. So you then have two weeks until the 3rd of December to accept your place in whichever school you've chosen. So by Christmas, every child in Gorey, it should be all sorted out. Everyone should know what schools you're going to. Is that all right? Um, yes, what about the new site? This is the question we get asked about the most. Um, everyone seems to be obsessed with the new school and the new site. Uh, as I said, a little bit of patience to be needed. Um, I've spoken to people in the department. They're very close to making a decision or to making a purchase with a local landowner here in Gorey uh, for a site. And as soon as they know, uh, we'll know. So I know there's there's a lot of things floating around the Gorey community about where it's going to be, and people are saying they know and this, that, the other. Believe me, if if we don't know now, nobody knows now. So it will be. We would hope by Christmas it should be uh, the site should be uh, uh, identified and bought and that we can move to a kind of pre-planning stage early next year. Um, so how far it'll be from the current one? There's probably two main sites that are, they're looking at at the moment, so we'll just have to wait and see which one is, is the Department of Education purchases is really it. Is that okay? Um, again, a lot about the permanent location, current location. Will it be temporary outdoor play space? Yep, yeah, so really to, just to let everybody know, most people will have seen where we are on Fort Road and this accommodation was put in just to get the school open here in September and right next door to it in the field beside us and um, there's a lot more temporary accommodation going in and we're going to be moving across there during the Christmas holidays so we'll start back in January. There's a number of two-story uh, port cabins going in so we'll have technology rooms, home economics rooms, science labs, all our academic classrooms, administrative block, all those things uh, are going in there. Uh, the company that was due to provide it uh, couldn't source the steel during the summer to put it in, so that's all in train now. Um, the work has started here. There's diggers here next door today. Uh, today, so that's all going to be put in. There'll be a tarmac area in the middle. There'll be basketball court. There'll be play area outside. So all that is still to come just this year, and then we'll be in that temporary accommodation as the work begins on the permanent site before we move into it. And as I said, it all happens very, very quickly. So any students that come in next September. Um, we'll certainly be finishing out their secondary school uh, days in a brand new school. And I suppose you don't want to be the parents who are looking back in a couple of years, driving up the road saying, God, we had the opportunity of going there and now look at the big fine school they have uh, and we went somewhere else. Um, what help is available to students who have ADHD, dyslexia and dyspraxia? Yep, so we have uh, SEN department here and we allocate our resource hours then out to students uh, who are in need of support and any students with additional needs. Uh, and what we do is, is a model of team teaching, which again is best practice at the moment. So very rarely will you see any students removed from class um, because we believe that all the students should be taught together in the same classroom. So the second teacher will go into the room and then they can help all the students and not just the students who have uh, additional education needs. We can also help the, the, the middle of the road students and we can help the very high achieving students as well because sometimes they're forgotten about a little bit uh, in other schools. 
So we push the high achieving uh, students every bit as much as we help the students um, who have additional educational needs. So yeah, absolutely, we have um, a very well run um, SEN department here in school. Yeah, that question has come up again. I just see it coming up again. Students with special education needs. Yeah, same as any other school. We have an SEN department here. We have resource hours and we use a team teaching model. <clears throat> um, what support have you a child with ASD? OK, so I want to just answer a question then about ASD unit. So we've been sanctioned by the Department of Education to open an ASD unit. In other words, we can open an ASD unit if we're required to open an ASD unit. It would have to be for a child that has a psychological report and diagnosis of ASD. That's the very first most important thing. And I suppose the really important thing for everyone to understand is that the NCSE, the National Council for Special Education, they are the ones who decide whether we open our ASD unit or not. And that's usually through the local CNO, the Special Education Needs Officer. So that the CNO will be uh, in touch with us during the school year. So currently, um, we will not like currently as it stands now in our application process, we're not opening an ASD unit next September because we haven't been directed to open it. Now, if people have applied to us with students who uh, have uh, an ASD diagnosis, I am making the CNO aware of that um, and asking if any of these children coming to our school would mean we could open our ASD unit. Because I want the message to be very clear here. We would be absolutely delighted to open our ASD unit next September. We are inclusive of all children and we really want to open our ASD unit, but 100% we get directed as to whether we open that based on need in the local community. So if anybody out there tonight has a child that has a diagnosis and they're wondering where they're going to go to school next year, please contact your primary school. Please ask them to contact the local CNO, the SENO, the Special Education Needs Officer, and make your child, um, oh, sorry, make him aware of your child is in sixth class, because that's really what we're waiting for. The CNO will, will go around all the primary schools and find out who has diagnosis, where they need to go, because all ourselves, Gory Community School and CREA, should all have ASD units open and places for those children. We just have to wait to be directed to open it. And that might be next February or March if it comes, uh, if it comes to happen, but we're absolutely ready to open our unit next September if we're directed to, but we have to be directed to open it first. So I hope that clears up that issue for people. I know it's very difficult for parents um, and I understand uh, for, for children with ASD, it's really important to know where they're going to go next September. So please, the local primary school, speak to the CNO and any applications I get that have, a, that have students with diagnosis, I'm informed the CNO about it. Okay, um, I'm just having a look here at the rest of the questions. Uh, maximum number of students per class. I've answered that already. Be kind of 24 and less with subject options. I hope my daughter will get a place. So I hope your daughter gets a place too. Um, yeah. Uh, P and sports activities. Okay, so at the moment we're quite restricted in terms of the site we're on at the moment, uh, but the local Gory Park is like a one minute walk down the road from us here. Um, so we access the park here to do all our after school activities in terms of GA and soccer and all those kind of bits and pieces. And the teachers again walk the students down at lunch times and the students can access the park at lunch times as well uh, if they want to go down and kick a ball and that kind of stuff as well. So um, the Gory Corporation has been fantastic to us in allowing us use of facility and want to thank them uh, and the students have been down there and picking up litter and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, yeah, so we'll have a hardcore play area in our accommodation that's going in at the moment. So by Christmas that will all be in their tarmac and we won't need to leave the school again because so we'll have a hardcore play area there. Um, OK, we're moving to Gory this year. We're not currently in any of the local feeder schools. Will this affect our application? So again, just to be very clear on this, Gory Educate Together Secondary School has no feeder schools. That's really important to understand that. We accept applications for everybody that is in what we would call the Greater Gory Catchment Area, the hinterland of Gory. Um, myself and our Deputy John have been out to visit all the primary schools that fall under our catchment area. We've spoken to all the students in sixth class, some of the students in fifth class, We've met all the principals out in those local primary schools. We've sent our brochures out um, and hopefully your, your children have come home and spoke to you about our school. Um, but there is no feeder schools here for Gory Educate Together Secondary School. Everybody in the catchment area has an equal opportunity of coming to the school here. And that's really important to get that information out there. Um, uh, no, there's uh, we there's no acknowledgement email once the admission once the application form comes into us. People are asking, do you get um, acknowledgement email? If you send in that jot form, we get we get it sent to us. So you can just take it that it, that it's in. Um, and I think that's about all the questions. I'm just scrolling down along here to the side. 
Um, yeah, so look, if anybody has any other questions, um, by all means, please contact the school. You can contact school through the school website. There's a space on our landing page, on the home page, where you can um, send in a question and it'll, it'll come into our ad administration account here in school. Or you can email our admin account, which is just admin at goryetss.ie. Um, our school phone number is 089-277-9901. And Una is our secretary and she'll be only delighted to answer your call and answer any questions that you might have. So please, by all means, get in contact with us. And, and if there's anything we have an answer tonight, we'll certainly be able to talk you through it uh, if you make contact with us. Uh, is it possible for a parent to set up a club such as an equestrian club for inter-schools competitions? The other two schools have teams. OK, um, absolutely. There will be lots of um, there will be lots of different events and different sports and different activities that we would be only delighted for the school to uh, for students in our school to represent uh, us in. So um, things like golf, things like tennis, things like equestrian, which we wouldn't be doing training for in the school. OK, I don't envisage people bringing in their horses to gallop around and, and train in here, neither do the other schools, um, but they do uh, enter the events. So absolutely, we are all about parental involvement here. And if parents want to set up or be involved in extracurricular activity uh, or bring their child to represent us in handball or athletics or in, as I said, tennis or golf or whatever it might be, we want to enter as many competitions as we can in as wide a variety of sports and different activities as we can. So if there's parents out there, your children, your child has a talent, they're into a, a particular thing that we don't have as an extracurricular activity per se in school here. Absolutely, we would be delighted for them to represent the school and we would enter them into the competition. And if the parent needs to bring them or accompanied by teachers or whatever, we would absolutely facilitate that. And also, if parents want to set up an extracurricular club here in school and come in, it's a simple case of the parent being guarded by the school here um, and they can come in and they can set up a, a club here after school as well. All right, Th those things will be discussed at the board of management level, but it's absolutely the type of parental involvement that we welcome into school here. Um, is there any point in applying if basically if you're outside the catchment area? Absolutely. You can apply if you're outside the catchment area. Uh, there's no issue with that, but I suppose you, you do want to look at our admissions policy when it comes to the allocation of places. So there's a number of criteria on our admissions policy if we're oversubscribed. So if we go over the 72 um, that have been sanctioned by the department, our selection criteria applies and we have probably the shortest selection criteria of any school in County Wexford. The selection criteria number one is if you have a current sibling in the school here. So if you already have somebody in first year here, um, those the sibling that's coming from sixth class uh, are allocated to places. Then if there's places left over after that, um, the next round of places go to students within the catchment area. So again, there may have to be a lottery for people in the catchment area. And then if there's any places then left, it goes to uh, students outside the catchment area. So absolutely you can apply for outside the catchment area. Yeah, so just answer that question there. Sibling choice is first priority. Yeah, sibling choice is first priority here in school. It's it's probably the only real criteria um, that we put in. OK, and, and outside of that, then. It's just the catchment area and then outside the catchment area. So I'm not sure if there's any other questions or if we want to leave it at that. As I said, you can contact us. There's a variety of different channels you can contact us on. Um, we hope to see a huge amount of your children here in school in September, and I can guarantee you wanting to they'll enjoy themselves to be safe, they'll be happy, and most importantly, they'll be engaged and they'll be challenged, which is really, really important. And um, so thank you all for coming along tonight. Thanks to all the staff for Joanne, who all stayed on tonight as well, to be here with everybody tonight. And um, just shows the dedication of our, of our staff here in school. They're absolutely fantastic. Your children will be very lucky to be taught by our staff here. They're amazing. Um, and thank you all, and I hope to speak to you all soon. Take care. Bye now.